Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to go and retarget the Sinti characters so that we can walk around with them and that all the animations that are currently working on the gray Unreal guy can work on the Sinti characters. We're also going to make it so that we can run around with the Sinti guys instead of the Unreal guy, and we're going to make a copy of him so that we can use him as a kind of an innocent bystander later in the level. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see if I can remember how to do it. It's not actually that difficult once you've done it once or twice. It's just there's a lot of stuff going on under the hood and, you know, bear with me here. We're going to go into our mannequin folder right now. And in it, we're going to go into the characters folder. In it, we have something called the mesh folder. And there's three files here. Once the skeleton, once the actual mannequin, we want to open the skeleton. Double click that and just go dock this guy up here. A single monitor people, one of those things. So this is Unreal Guy. He is currently in an A pose. Now the Sinti guys have been rigged so that they stand with their arms kind of outstretched and we call that a T pose, kind of forming the letter T and forming the letter A. An A pose is usually used because clothing drapes a little bit better in that pose rather than in the T-pose. The T-pose is a little bit more stretched in the shoulders, so clothing doesn't really fit on that. So it's kind of two approaches, and that's why you find sometimes you find A-poses, sometimes you find T-poses. We can just go and tweak this guy so that he takes on a T-pose, and then we retarget the animations from, his, from him being in the T-pose to the Sinti guys, and everything is going to be just fine. So to do that, click the guy's upper left arm. We have to do this on both sides. So click his upper left arm, use the green kind of rotation thing and move this thing up to 50. You have to do that on both sides. Then we have to, if we look closely from the top here, we need to use his lower arm. That needs to go down by 10 and back by 30, like so on both sides, and his hand needs to go up by 10. So let's do that over here as well. Down by 10, back the blue thing, minus 30, and then the hand that needs to go up by 10 with the blue thing. So upper arm, lower arm and hand. And then we have this guy in kind of a straight T pose. There's an article on my website with these exact values. I'm going to link to that in the description below if you want to read that. The whole thing written out, that's, that's a big article on my website. Next, we need to make sure that we set up our rig that's here on the left hand side under select rig. We need to make sure we select the humanoid rig. And that now gives us a lot of rigging options down here, which is awesome. That's exactly what we need. So. This is set to none by default. Make sure this is set to humanoid rig. Then click this button on the bottom here that says modify pose. Click that and pick use current pose. And when you do that, he is now locked in to the T-pose. Just his skeleton though, so we can still run around with him. The animations for the Unreal guy haven't really changed, but we're gonna copy them over and retarget them to the Sinti skeleton next. I like to go and save this and then close this. We're kind of done with him. And we need to do something similar to the Sinti skeleton now. So for that, depending on which pack you have, I'm using the Polygon City pack here. I'm opening that up. Usually that's under meshes and characters. We can see a ton of files in here. Uh, these are the things with the pink underline. That's the actual skeletal mesh. That's the thing we're going to go and switch out later in code. Then we have the physics asset here. This is the brown thing. And then we have one that is blue. That should just be one in the whole folder here. That is in my case called the SK character city rig. So that file is going to be different in every pack that you have, but it'll match all these pink underlined skeletal meshes there. So open that up, much like we have opened up the Unreal Guy's skeleton, um, skeleton a moment ago. Open this guy up and we can see the first character in here. This is called a preview mesh and it just gives us a little preview there. 
it's kind of the first thing I want to do. It looks like there is a preview mesh in here already, but it's somehow, if you don't do this next step, it kind of doesn't work. I don't really know why. So head over here to the preview mesh button and click on it and pick any of the Sinti characters in the pack. So I might just go and pick the same guy, which is called businessman in a shirt, pick him. Well, in fact, let's pick the second guy. And uh, this is now the guy in the suit. And Unreal Engine at the bottom right here will tell you that the preview mesh is set temporarily and we can apply it to the asset. That's a temporary pop-up that does go away like this example shows. But uh, the good thing is it's also available up here in the apply to asset. So we need to click that and now we can get on with it. It's another optional step here. You don't have to do this, but I, I do like doing this. If you look at the fingers of the Sinti guys, you can see that they have, whoops, I'm on a trackball here. This, sometimes navigation is a little bit cumbersome. You can see that they technically only really have three fingers. They have a thumb, an index finger, and they've got like, you know, this area made up of three fingers here. Our Unreal guy has five fingers. So we don't have to do this next step. It'll work if you just skip this whole thing and just go um, save this whole thing and, and get on with it. I just wanted to show you that there is a way to map Unreal Guy's essentially pinky and ring finger to the Sinti's kind of third finger thing here. Oftentimes cartoon characters have less fingers than real humans. They're just easier to draw. Sometimes the geometry isn't there and that's the case here. So let's have a look at this. Down at the bottom left here, we can go and go into Show Advanced, which will give us a little view of the source and the target here. So in our case, we have something called the pinky and the ring finger, which are currently not mapped. They're just set to none here. But we can set this to the Sinti character's finger number three. So we've got finger one, finger two, and finger three on the left and on the right hand. So we can just go and go into this drop down menu and see if we can find it here. Yeah, here we have it. Finger one, two, and three on just finger. So we have thumb, index, and just finger in four segments here. So let's map pinky one left to finger one left, pinky two left to finger two left. We go pinky three left to finger three left, and finger four, well, we'll just go forget about it. We do the same with the ring finger. So ring one left, is going to be mapped to finger one left, ring two left to finger two left, ring three left, we're going to map that to finger three left. All right, that's that. We need to do the same for the right hand. So let's go scroll down until we find the right hand. So there's pinky one right, needs to now go to finger one right, pinky two right, scroll down to finger two right, Pinky three right goes to finger three right. We're going to forget about finger four. And then ring one right needs to also go to finger one right. Ring two right to finger two right. And then ring three right to finger three right. There we go. I believe we have to go and say modify pose, use current pose, and then save the skeleton. And that's that. That's all we need to do in the Sinti skeleton. We can go and close this down. Just remember what this is called. SK character city rig is mine. And then we'll go and see if we can retarget some animations. This is my favorite part, by the way. This is now, I'm going to close these things down here. I'm going to go and head into my mannequin folder. In it, I have an animations folder, and this is made up of all the animations. The so green underlined, these are literal animation files. And the yellow ones, well, they're, they're two different things. One is the animation blueprint. This is the one that we're going to be retargeting. And the second one is a 2D blend space that is used by Unreal Engine to map the forward speed that you give the character to the actual output animation. So move forward slowly, character walks slowly, move forward fast, character jogs fast. That's what this blend space does. Before we proceed, I'm going to go and make myself a new folder in this folder. So in the animations folder, I'm going to go and make a new folder called Sinti Animations. You can call it anything you like, but when we're going to retarget these animations, they're all going to be copied and I'd like to keep them separate. I'd like to keep them with the same name. I just want to put them in a separate folder so that I have access to the current animations without overwriting them. 
With that done, let's go and right click on the third person Anim BP and pick retarget Anim Blueprints. Duplicate Anim Blueprints and retarget. It's kind of a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? But let's do that. And a kind of a scary window opens, which isn't actually as scary as, you know, it's not actually that scary. There's only on the left hand side, we only have one option. We should only have one option. If you don't have that, perhaps you haven't saved the Sinti rig that we've just been playing with. So select that. And then we can see Unreal Guy in his T-Pose, just like we've made him. And the Sinti Preview Mesh also in the T-Pose. Perfect. Now remember that folder that I've just made, I'm going to go and make sure that on the bottom here under folder, I'm going to go and change that to that very folder. So that was a mannequin animations, Sinti animations. And that is just so that in the next step, when I hit retarget on the bottom, all these animations and the animation blueprint will be copied over and kind of rejigged. And this is where all the results are going to go. Otherwise, that end up in the same folder and I'll just make it all cluttered. So I'm going to go and hit retarget. And there we go. That was all. So now in here, this is our folder already, Sinti Animations. We now have animations with the same name using the Sinti guy. But we have one that is still called Third Person Anim BP. And that is the same file name as this one, Third Person Anim BP, with the Unreal guy. I need to make sure... I know which one's which, so I'm going to rename mine in the Sinti Animations folder. I'm going to go and select it, press F2, and then I'm going to call it Sinti Anim BP, just so that I know which one's which, because I'm going to have to go and select it in a moment. There we go. Take your time with these things. This is kind of scary to do these things, but do it a few times, practice it a few times. You'll, you'll, you'll totally get there very quickly. And, you know, it's, it's going to be fun because the next step is what makes this whole thing worthwhile. Let's head over to third person BP under blueprints. This is where we find our third person character. I want to make sure I leave the Unreal guy intact rather than tweaking his settings and overwriting it with something that I'm making. So I'm going to go and make a copy of him. I can do that either by right clicking and selecting duplicate or control W will do the same thing. And that gives me an exact duplicate of that that I need to name. And I'm going to call this instead of third person character, I'm going to call this Sinti character. Looks exactly the same. Now we can make changes in this guy and leave this guy alone. Third person character is Unreal guy, Sinti character is going to become our guy. Double click it to open that file, dock it at the top, and I'll show you what we're going to do going forward with the viewport. So this is all scary code here. We're going to deal with that in a minute. Uh, under viewport, you can see Unreal Guy in action. That's the thing we want to replace. So we have quite a few things going on in this viewport. We've got the camera, and we've got the capsule component here. Make sure we select the actual Unreal guy. It's the same as the mesh, inherited mesh component here. You can either, you can select that from here or you can just select Unreal guy so that he has this little orange outline. And then on the right hand side here, we can see something. I hope I'm not in the way here. I can see under the mesh section, we can see something called skeletal mesh. And if I change that into one of the Sinti guys now, for example, uh, character male hoodie, watch what happens to Unreal Guy. He's going to change into T-Post guy with a hoodie. That's cool. But literally what this does here, this changes the actual skeletal mesh that's on the skeleton. So what we're doing here with this drop down menu, you can change it to anything you like, really, to any of the Sinti assets. Any of them will work. This is what we're going to be doing programmatically in code. When I bring up the menu and click a button, this is essentially what's going to happen in the code. This this function here, skeletal mesh change. So perhaps I'm going to leave it, uh, I don't know, a businesswoman. That's cool. She's just standing there in a the T-pole, so that's not very exciting. Let's make sure she actually moves and animates, like, you know, breathing animation like Unreal Guy did. And that is done also on the right-hand side, just above that, under the animation section, under uh, anim class. It's currently set to none, so make sure you find our Sinti Anim BP in that. So that is the thing that I have retargeted. We had third person Anim BP. We made a copy, retargeted copy of that, renamed it Sinti Anim BP, and that is what I can now select. Let's do that, and boom! 
businesswoman is standing there breathing idle and everything. Very cool. Aha. Uh -huh. That's a big success. If you haven't renamed it, you might find two third person anim BPs in the list. So if I search for that in anim class, if I go and search for third if I can spell actually third person anim BP, if I select that, watch what happens. She just still stands there. So even though you've selected an anim class and you thought maybe it was the correct one, if she still stands there, you haven't selected the correct animation blueprint here. That's kind of the reason why I've renamed it because otherwise I'd have two files with the exact same name and that's just, you know, super confusing. So I'm going to go pick my Cinti anim BP and then she's going to stand there breathing. Pick any skeletal mesh you want. Make sure you uh, save, compile, in fact, compile and save, and then leave that open. We're going to come back to this quite frequently. And let's see what happens if we go and play our project. Oh, man, we're still playing with Unreal Guy. What a shame. Where's our Sinti character? Well, no worries. We're going to fix that in a moment. This is happening because the game's game mode, this one here, third-person game mode, still references the third-person character for the game so we need to fix that we can actually do two things let's go and grab this guy who's in the viewport and delete him we don't really need him in there because that's just you know we, we want to we're going to use our player start to spawn the actual character so there less overhead go and open the third person game mode and fix this so that the default pawn class here that currently reads third person character go and drop that down and pick the Sinti character from the list or whatever you've renamed your character so in my case it's the Sinti character and that's that compile save close compiling and saving it isn't really necessary it'll do that the moment you hit play and at that point we can see Sinti character walking around very good f11 will make this into full screen experience and if you see that congratulations you have made it this far you can walk around with the Sinti character that is very cool in the next video we're going to have a look at how we can put that menu together so that we can change this character so we're going to go and create the menu we're going to make the button selectable and then we're going to go ahead and hook them up so that a skeletal mesh change can happen. Thank you so much for watching. Join me in the next episode for more schnickschnack and shenanigans.